Hello world, hello forty two community. I decided to make a video about the project Philosophers. Mainly because when I was doing it, I couldn't find a good video explaining it. And also I thought I could save you some time and some black hole days. You can directly give a like to this video because this is not the first time I'm recording it. It really took me some time to make this video. In the description below you can find the link to my github profile, you can follow, go to philosophers42 repository, give a star, clone it, and video consists of two parts. In the first part I explain the function that we can use, in the second one I explain the project itself. But if you're already familiar with the function, you can just skip to the second part. The first function that we need to talk about is get time of day. And the function allows us to get the current time with high precision. It returns the time in seconds and microseconds. So it accepts two arguments. The first one is a struct called time well. It accepts the pointer to it. And the second argument is the pointer to a struct time zone, which we do not really use. And it saves number of seconds passed since 1st January 1970 and number of microseconds passed since the last second. Um, in success, it returns zero and other value when there is an error. I have prepared a few examples, which will explain in a better way how this function works. Example one, where I just obtain the current time, print the number of seconds and microseconds, and I also print number of years passed since 1970. Uh, this is how many seconds passed since 1970, and this is how many seconds passed since the last second. In one second, we have 1 million microseconds or 1000 milliseconds, and in the project, we will use the value is in milliseconds. So to get number of years, I'm just dividing number of seconds by 60, by 60, by 24 hours, and then by 365 days. This is pretty easy. There is also second example. And here I implemented function get time, which I also use for philosophers. It returns number of milliseconds passed since 1970. To get number of milliseconds, I multiply number of seconds by thousand and divide the number of microseconds by thousand. This is for precision. I save the current time at the starting point. I call function new sleep, which introduces a pause in our program. It accepts value in microseconds. So I'm passing 10,000 microseconds, which is equal to 10 milliseconds. And then I'm just obtaining the time again and printing the difference in milliseconds. So yeah. It works as it's supposed to work. Now, 10 milliseconds past the start because I'm making the function sleep or pause for this time. Pretty easy, but we still need to take a look at you sleep a little bit deeper because there is a problem with it. This is an example for you sleep. I have two structs time well where I save the starting time of the program and ending time of the program and between these two values, I sleep 200,000 microseconds or 200 milliseconds. Pretty easy. And then I just print how much it actually needed to sleep, request sleep time and actual sleep time. As you can see, it's not precise, even though we requested it to sleep 200,000 microseconds, it slept with a little bit difference. This is because you sleep is not precise and it always differs. And never, it, it's never precise. So for the project, for philosophers, you will need to write your own you sleep function, which will be more precise than this one. Now let's talk about threads because it's a new concept in the project, which we never used before. So thread is a separate flow that executes tasks concurrently. Um, in simple words, for example, 
If you want to play a game while your laptop is downloading a movie, it is possible thanks to multi cores on our laptops, which can manage multiple tasks in, in one time. So this is also possible thanks to threads. So if you want, let's say, two operations to be going at the same time in our program, then we use threads. And this is necessary for philosophers because it says in the project subject that every single philosopher needs to be a separate thread because all philosophers need to exist at the same time we will talk about it a little bit later but yeah so here i also have prepared a few examples example number one simple example we have two functions print hello and print world where i just print the messages introduce a small post in between just to see how it's working nothing fancy as you can see it first prints 100 times hello and then world and here we just have one thread our main thread so these two functions are executed one after another but in the example 2 I have two threads and to one of them I assigned function print hello and print world we will talk about this the p thread create and which arguments it takes in a second but first we will take a look how it works hmm. so as you can see now these two threads are working at the same time and because i assigned to one of them print hello and to another one print world they are the printing is mixed up, right? Sometimes they print one after another, sometimes it prints twice. This is because threads do not work at the same speed. Sometimes one of them works faster, sometimes another one is faster. So yeah. Now let's talk about pthread create. So there is a pthread t struct, it's a built-in struct which comes with this header pthread create which accepts four arguments the first one is a pointer to our pthread t the second one is the attributes that we can use for the function but for philosophers we do not use and we cannot use them third one is the function that we want to assign to the thread and the last one if we want to pass any arguments to the function we will use this one but this time I'm not passing anything so it's not and the function that we want to pass to be thread create needs to be this way so it needs to return void pointer and it needs to take void pointer as well which later on we can cast for something else I will show in a second after p thread create we have already two threads running at the same time our main thread and two threads that we have cre created here after we have created two threads we have two options either we need to join them back to the main thread or we need to detach them and if you want to join the threads the main thread needs to wait until these two threads finish and only afterwards our main thread can finish but when it comes to p thread detach this is another function that we can use the main thread doesn't have to wait so it depends on you which one you want to use but uh, i personally use this one because in the end we need to free all the values that we have malloced and pthread join accepts pthread t a variable if we want we can also save the return value from the function that we have attached to the thread so in our case i'm just returning null so i do not have to save it but we can if we want Example 3 will be more interesting. Here I'm allocating an integer, assigning 0 to it. I'm creating two threads, join them, and I'm printing the value of our integer later on. Once I, I have joined both threads. And as you can see, this time I'm passing our integer to the function routine. And I'm attaching the same function to both threads. This is a function. As I said, it needs to look like this. And inside of the function, we can 
cast our void pointer type to any type that we want. And what I'm doing in this routine function is I'm just getting the value, incrementing it some number of times. Let's make it smaller, 100 times. And this is basically it. So because I'm attaching the same function to both threads, in the end, we, our integer should be 200. And yes, it is indeed. But if we try to make it a little bit bigger, as you can see, like it's supposed to be 200,000, but it's almost like half. This is because of something called data races. I will run it a few more times. As you can see, now it's working kind of properly, but sometimes it's not, sometimes it is. I will explain why. So first we need to understand how incrementing works behind the hood. So first our threads, our program gets the value from memory. And let's say at some point the value is equal to two of our integer. So it gets the value from memory, so it gets two. And at this moment inside of memory, our integer is still two. Then our thread increments the value obtained. So it makes it three. But at this moment, in the memory, it's still 2. And then it writes back to the memory. And only now it, be it becomes 3. The problem here is, as I mentioned before, threads do not work at the same speed. Sometimes one of them is faster, sometimes the second one is faster than the first one. And it causes problems. Because these two threads have access to the same variable, it can be mixed up overall. So let's say our thread number one stopped at step number one here or even here. And at this moment, our value was two. And for some reason, our thread stopped working for some time here. And But our second thread was working fast enough and made our value in the memory already not 2 but let's say 10 but what this step number 3 does is it writes back the 3 to memory so now even though it was 10 it made it back to 3 this is called data race and it should never happen in our program <laughs> you will definitely have some problems with it and there are tools how to check them which I will show you in a, in a bit but yeah this is this is what we need to avoid and that's when we need mutexes it is it's a new concept for us in philosophers and I have also prepared an example to show how it works in mutex.c I have just one example what I do here is almost the same but now I have created a structure data t where I have our integer and the mutex p thread mutex t. It's a built in struct that comes with p thread header. And I have created the function init data where I allocate it. I assign integer to zero. I initialize our mutex and I return the pointer to it. So in the example, I initialize data. I create our threads, I, I assign to them almost the same routine function, and I pass our data. So what is different here is that in the routine function, before incrementing the value, I lock our mutex, and then I unlock it. So what is a mutex? Mutex is basically a lock. It can be a locker for a variable, it can be a locker for some action that we want to take, for example. And at this moment, this would behave some, somewhat like this. Our first thread comes to this line, p thread mutex lock, and it creates a locker. I'm not really a drawing guy, but yeah, I will try. And here we have password that we can choose. Yeah, 
and it locks the locker. In our case, it locks it because we want to increment the integer. So at this moment, here we have our number, and after and only after it incremented, it opens the locker. So <laughs> sorry for my drawing. And if our first thread, let's say it it got to lock. And the mudex first it passed this uh, this line and then it comes to incrementing and if bef before our uh, p thread one unlocks the locker our p thread two comes here wants to lock it our second thread then it cannot because it is already locked and only once our first thread unlocks it our second thread can get access to the locker to the mutex so the beauty of mutex is that it can be only locked or unlocked you will use mutex a lot in the project to protect our variables to protect even printf i will also explain in a while why but yeah i hope i could explain if not i really suggest watching this guy just a second i really suggest to take a look at this playlist i watched this guy to do pipex and for philosophers as well i think this is what you need to know before you can start philosophers and by the way in the end of the program you still need to destroy the mutex and I think at this moment you can move on to explanation of philosophy. Just to imagine, philosophers sit around the table and philosophize about the mysteries of the world. And all they do is think, eat and sleep. They repeat these three actions and this is their routine. Every philosopher needs to be in another thread since they all need to live and follow their routine all at the same time. And every philosopher has only one fork to eat, but the problem is they eat spaghetti, which makes it hard to eat it with one fork. So, when someone wants to eat, he or she has to borrow a fork from nearby sitting philosopher. And you can already see, okay, so they're going to share one fork, so this is going to be the shared variable, and you will need a mutex for it. For a philosopher to eat, philosopher needs two forks, and obviously when one philosopher is eating, the nearby sitting philosopher needs to wait until the, his fork is available for him to start eating. And if the fork is returned too late, philosopher gets hungry and he dies. And what's the concept? of the project so the idea of the project is if given enough time to eat sleep and time to die the philosophers need to exist without problems without dying so they should avoid dying and what actually means enough time so there are two cases which i will talk about the first one is when we have even number of philosophers and second one when we have odd number of, of philosophers but before that it's probably a good idea to run philo and show how it works philo we will have number of philosophers time to die i'm making it 410 time to eat and time to sleep and the last argument is optional it's the number of meals they need to have before they could finish their routine so let's make it like five and if i run you should see how it works so philosopher takes a fork takes a second fork he starts eating and after 200 milliseconds he starts sleeping so these are the values in milliseconds to obtain these ones right at the start of the program before i execute all the threads of the philosophers i need to save the current time of the program so it's going to be the starting start time of the program 
and then uh, whenever I want to print some timestamp I obtain the current time again and I subtract it from the starting time of the program this is how I obtain these values as you can see they are working properly after they have eaten five times each the simulation stops there is actually a very useful website I will show you if you search for philosopher visualizer 42 you will find this website I just copied the printings generate and it just shows how they eat how they sleep the timestamps and the thing is philosopher number one and two should never eat at the same time because they share a fork in between and when one is eating the second one needs to wait and there is also thinking time but it's very tiny because in the program we, we only have time to die time, time to eat and time to sleep and now let's go back to the, to the question what does it actually mean enough time so when we have even number of philosophers time to die needs to be time to eat plus time to sleep plus let's say 10 milliseconds but it depends on how many threads how many philosophers you have because if you have let's say already 50 or 100 threads working at the same time it's going to get really hard for your laptop to handle it and it's going to get really slow so it can differ with 10 can it can be 50 100 200 but when it comes to odd number of philosophers it's going to be different time to die needs to be at least twice time to eat plus time to sleep plus a little bit of time and you are probably wondering why so i will explain you in this example if we have five number of philosophers only two of them can be eating at the same time i will give numbers to each of them number one two three four and five if number philosopher number one is eating num philosopher number two has to wait and let's say philosopher number three is also eating so they have taken the forks and not number five not number four not number two can actually start eating because there are not enough forks available let's say at this moment philosopher number one and three have already eaten and now the fork is available back again and philosopher number two starts eating and philosopher number four and philosopher number five is again waiting for the fork to be free and this is why we need twice the cycle of uh, eating because philosophers number one and three will eat first and then two and four so it will be already two cycles and only then philosopher number five will be able to get the fork i will actually run uh, let's make it three maybe 800 uh, my laptop might be a little bit slow right now because i'm running multiple applications at the same time but yeah now, as you can see i have like one two milliseconds delay in the end because i'm running too many programs right now okay now let's say it again and now you can definitely see a thinking time because the cycle comes in a deeper in a, in a different way now let's try five philosophers actually to make it easier so philosopher number one and two can never be eating at the same time because they share a fork and the same with the rest you can probably already see the pattern right thinking goes something like this so you definitely need synchronization to make your philosophers work without it somebody is going to die so yeah this is the idea of the project when the right values are passed your philosophers need to exist if not they should die so for example if I provide a 
let's say for philosophers and at this time I want to provide 390 and definitely somebody is going to die because time to die is less than the sum of time to eat and time to sleep and because it, it, this was what I'm about to say is a little bit arguable depending on the campus probably but every time philosopher eats you need to update his last meal time and in my campus people say that you need to update the last meal time as soon as philosopher takes both forks so before the philosophers the philosopher um, falls into sleep you need to already update the last meal time at this moment so this is how i implemented it so i already did 390 one philosopher died and this is normal because i'm providing the less number of milliseconds to die so i think uh, now i will talk about synchronization because this is what is going to save you a lot of time uh, personally i have tried two ways to synchronize them but there is also a third one which i saw some people using so the first one is you need to make half of philosophers sleep at the start of the program in my case i'm making philosophers odd um, philosophers sleep at the beginning of the, my program they are going to sleep time to eat divided by two just to make sure that uh, the first half of philosophers got the forks and you cannot make just let's say philosophers from five to from one to five take forks first and then from five to ten the rest because uh, they still won't be able to eat all concurrently because they share the fork so you need to just make sure that you you divided your philosophers into groups de depending on their ids and if you follow this way then in this case philosophers one and three two and four they're going to be in one group and five is going to be altering from one to another and if you have even number philosophers it's going to be even easier because let's say you have four in this case philosopher number one and three are going to be eating at the same time i will show you so yeah and the second way to synchronize them is to make half of philosophers start taking from right fork and the rest philosophers are going to start taking the forks from left side this will make sure that you will not end up with something called deadlock deadlock is when mutuks are locked and threads are waiting for them to be available but they will never be available so deadlock happens when two or more threads are waiting for each other to release the lock or take action but none of them can move forward it's kind of a standstill in the program's execution where everything is frozen because each philosopher or thread is waiting for something from another thread it will never be fulfilled i will show you an example so if we do not synchronize them in some way then something like this can happen let's say they all start taking from the right fork and we do not synchronize them in this case philosopher all of them have taken by, by one fork now everybody wants to take the second work fork but they will be waiting for it because it's already busy like for example philosopher number five is waiting for left fork to be free again but philosopher number one will never actually put it back because philosopher number one is also waiting for philosopher number two to release the mutex or fork and this is how it works with every single philosopher and this is called something called deadlock and you should avoid it and if you actually use one of these me methods you should be fine and the last one third way to synchronize them is to all philosophers take from right fork except for last one so philosophers number one two 
three and four will start taking from from right and philosopher number five will take from left I, I have seen some people implementing it this way but i didn't use this method what you should also know is how you are going to check for philosophers death philosophers cannot check themselves if they are dead or not and i will explain why let's say we have our case we have five philosophers 200 to die 250 milliseconds to eat and 400 to sleep and it should never work and it will it will never work actually but let's take a look how it works in the program it doesn't matter in which way you're going to implement the synchronization but you will end up in this kind of situation right at the beginning of the program zero philosophers number one and three will take both forks and they will start eating philosophers number two four and five they are going to already try to access the mutex they will be waiting for some fork to be again available we implemented in first way so when odd philosophers sleep in, in the beginning of the program it means they all take from let's say right side this philosopher will be waiting for this fork to be available and philosopher number five will be able to take this fork and will be waiting for this to be available and it means philosopher number one and three will be eating no problem but philosophers number two four and five at already five philosophers 200 to die 250 to eat and 100 to sleep so and in the beginning of the program we make them sleep let's say half of eating time it means at 125 philosophers number two four and five will already try to access the mutex the fork uh, they will be so to say in a queue and when they are waiting for the mutex to be ag available again they won't be able to do anything else and this is the problem so they will be already stuck they won't be able to check if they are already dead or not because they are already busy with another action and this is why we need another thread which is going to check them if somebody died or not so this will look something like this so main thread will execute on the threads and there should be at least one more thread or the main thread can actually check them as well but it doesn't matter when the philosophers are following their routine one thread should be constantly checking if somebody died so every philosopher has his uh, variable last time so this pink thread is going to access every single philosopher and check okay when did he last time eat if somebody dies then this thread needs to go to every single philosopher thread and let them know like hey you need to stop because somebody died because once one philosopher dies the simulation needs to stop i made it in a way that i have two more threads checking and one of them is going to check if somebody died and the second one is going to check if everybody is full and this is going to be executed only if we have this option if we don't have it i won't have the second thread for monitoring if everybody is full because philosophers shouldn't be able to communicate with each other i made it this way once somebody dies and thread that's monitoring them are going to go through every single philosopher's struct and then switch the flag inside of every single philosopher to say that okay you need to stop i saw some people implement it in a way that once the philosopher dies or once his everybody is full then the philosopher goes out and say hey i'm dead or i'm full and other philosophers will check for that flag in the main struct and then stop depending on the flag which is not really correct way as far as i'm concerned i would do it in a way that there is a checking thread and once the thread finds out that 
somebody died or everybody is full, it will go to every single philosopher's tract and then uh, change the flag. So every single philosopher is going to have a flag, his own flag. Now let's talk about the potential problems that you can have. Uh, first, you need to take care of the case when you have only one philosopher, because if there is only one philosopher, it means only one fork, and the philosopher is not going to be able to eat. And you should also have a mutex for printf, for printing these timestamps and these messages. And this is because printf first writes to a buffer, and if you don't have the mutex for it, then a few philosophers can try to run the uh, write to buffer at the same time, and you will have somewhat like mixed printing. As I said, you should create your own new sleep function because you sleep is not precise. You should avoid infinite loops. Here I have get time. So you shouldn't have this kind of infinite loops because in this case, this wait function is going to be running and going crazy. What I would suggest is to make something like this. Here where you will sleep some number of microseconds and then it's going to wake up check the time, it can be even, you know, 500 or whatever. So yeah, try to avoid infinite loops, especially if, if you're running on Linux. There is also one arguable topic, if philosophers should not die when they're eating. So I have this check, if philosopher is eating, then, then he doesn't die. If you want, you can implement it this way, but it depends how other students react on, on it in your campus, because some people say, no, nah, it doesn't matter, some people say, no, nah, it matters. Also, I suggest using philosopher's visualizer to see if the printing and if synchronization is right. Also, there is a tool in Walgrind. Walgrind minus minus tool equal hellgrind. And this is the one that checks the data races, possible problems that you can have so you, you will run it this way. Or you can also add two flags in your in your make file. This flag and you should be fine. And there is something that's going to make your life a lot more easier. And this is setters and getters. In my code, I don't want to have pthread mutex log and unlock in everywhere so that's why i have created the getters and setters so whenever i want to access the variable that can be accessed with only a mutex then i use this function get philo state get number of philos it will make your life a lot more easier and your code a lot more cleaner i hope i could help and explain if so give this video a like leave comments you can just hit me on slack if you want and see you.